Microwave Cookery with Marilyn Martinez. We have a pizza crisper crispy, uh, heating here, and I'm going to get our pizza from the freezer. We're going to make a frozen pizza. All kids like to make frozen pizza. I think, I think it needs a little extra stuff on there. A uh, little extra stuff is not necessarily necessary, but it, if you want to enhance your pizza, you can add a little bit of stuff. And we hear the bell, so we'll want to get this stuff on here pretty quick because a pizza crisper is a, um, a, like a browning skillet, which I'll explain to you a little bit. It has metal embedded, tin oxide embedded in it, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, but we'll just add just a little bit of cheese and a couple of pieces of pepperoni. And I like to buy my pepperoni whole and slice it in the food processor so they may not, might not be all just exactly round like the um, commercially sliced pepperoni is, but this is home, this is just a little addition to your pizza, and of course the little flavor packet. Things have a way of walking away from me like scissors and things. Now let's add a little seasoning and then a sliced mushroom or so. You can add uh, some other things to this, but we're just gonna add a couple of things to this. This up here. Sliced, you could use canned mushrooms if you like. Sometimes it's just as easy to buy if you're just gonna buy, have a couple of mushroom pieces, just as easy to get a mushroom or two at the market and uh, add it. Now, let's take this pizza crisper. Uh, now the pizza crisper itself will be hot. The handles are not hot, but it's, you can almost see that it's yellow and you see the tin oxide on the bottom. And if we have any food or anything cooked on there, it will have cooked on. Now we're going to put the pizza on here, and then we're going to cook five minutes. And I don't know which, it, if, if my child were to choose which was her favorite microwave, I have a piece of cheese down here and it'll burn on. Uh, favorite microwave accessory, yeah, I think it would be very, very difficult for her to choose between the pizza crisper and the popcorn popper. Now we're going to cook five minutes. Um, she had her birthday slumber party horror of horrors uh, to me, to mothers, um, we were going to make pizza. And I said, oh, well, we're going to make a lot of pizza, three pizzas, uh, a lot of pizzas, and we'll do them in the oven. Just a nice pizza stone in the oven. Oh, no, my husband said, we're not going to do it that way. We'll do it in the microwave oven. Much better product, which you do. It's more crispy. It's quick. It's easy. In the oven, you'd preheat your oven 10 minutes, and then you'd go ahead and cook 10 minutes. In the microwave oven, you preheat the dish five minutes, Cook five minutes. Very simple project. Ooh, the pizza is done. Mmm. Now, another thing to make in your microwave oven is popcorn. Caramel we're going to make today is caramel corn, the popcorn. And that's something you will want to use the, um, a container for. You'll want to use a popcorn popper. Because popcorn is very dry, you'll want the popcorn kernels to be held at the bottom. I popped one popper. That we're gonna, the caramel corn needs two poppers of popcorn. So we're going to put it in a paper sack. The popped pot, the already popped popcorn. We popped it in the, and I'm going to set it down here so it's not in our way. Um, and we're going to add a half a cup of popcorn. Now it's really not necessary for me to measure this because on here is a frosted area and I fill it to the top of that frosted area. And you always want to use the amount that they suggest so that you have the right amount of uh, food in the oven. Now we're going to cook this three and a half minutes. Three, three, oh, and then we'll pour off what's popped. One of the reasons I, I, I love that popcorn popper is that uh, I have a young child who loves popcorn. We have a babysitter. The babysitter comes, you know, makes popcorn on the, on the range top, burns it in the pan. Oh, it's very distressing. And I have to worry while I'm gone. There's a hot gas range. There's a flame. There's a hot pan. They have hot oil. No more do I have to worry about that sort of thing. Now they put, put it in the microwave oven. 
my, my eight-year-old little girl can do that. Elizabeth can make popcorn very, very well. Uh, she can teach the sitters how to make popcorn. And I don't have a hot pan. The microwave is cool inside. She isn't going to get burned unless she gets the butter too hot that she pours over the top. And you notice that I didn't put any oil or any water or anything on it, just popcorn in there. And I used a very fresh popcorn. I always try to keep a bag of fresh popcorn. Now, sometimes I only buy a small bag so that I get it all used up before it gets old. We're out of popcorn a lot, but that's the way I like to do it. And I hear it popping. And uh, I find that if popcorn, if it's after it's been in the microwave oven one minute, is started to pop, then it's pretty good popcorn, and I'm going to have good luck. If it takes you more than a minute for your popcorn to start popping, then your popcorn's too old or it's too dry. Be sure you keep it covered once you get your popcorn, that you either you know, put it in a jar and cap it up tight, or in the plastic bag that you put the twisty on or the rubber band on, so that you keep it very, very fresh. We're going to make some caramel for the, uh, the popcorn also. And we're going to do that in a measuring cup, too. And it calls for some corn syrup. Use a lot of corn syrup in microwave cooking, so I get it in a large jar. We need a fourth of a cup. This, the markings on this measuring cup, this large one, start at a half a cup. Otherwise, you can use the measuring cup markings and uh, for many of the things that you cook. And a half a cup of brown sugar. You might want to choose that fairly dark brown. Wow, I really got that in there. A half a teaspoon of salt. And a stick of butter. Do all of your measuring just right in the dish. You, you know, very few dishes. Children love to cook in the microwave oven. I think partially because the cleanup is so easy. One of the, one of the first tricks I learned how the children and people like to do in the microwave oven is to make hot chocolate. And you make it right in the mug. You can just um, take your mug, sprinkle chocolate chips across the bottom, and add milk, and then heat it right in the mug. There's no, um, no sticky, icky dish. We'll kind of watch here to see if we have, when we have an oven available. You'll notice that I'm cooking with two microwave ovens, which uh, you'll think, oh, that's, uh, you need two microwave ovens. You need two microwave ovens if I'm going to show you a lot of things, which I want to do. I wanted to show you how to use a turntable oven and how to use a straight oven. What, one without a turntable, one that has a stirrer fan in, in the top. Let's see how we did. So in order to show you more things, um, more how to cook more foods, you have to use more ovens. Now, I like, you can pop this up to five minutes. And I like to pop three and a half minutes and then a minute and a half. Then that's all. You just, you don't want to cook more than five minutes. So we'll quickly pour off what's popped. And then we'll pop, oh, a minute and 15. And I've got my popcorn all ready here for the caramel part of this. To watch here for, uh, see how our brownies are doing. We could have covered the brownies with saran wrap. If you feel like your brownies get too dry, then cover them with saran wrap, and then they won't get nearly as dry. I can smell them cooking. That's one of the nice things about the microwave oven. You still can smell them. But I think you'll even notice in the, with bacon especially. You know, when you cook bacon in your house, the draperies and everything seems to reek of bacon. Not with the microwave oven. The, the smell is much lighter and it's much uh, more short-lived. You, when you're done cooking, the smell disappears. Let's set this in. And we're going to cook this. This is a four-minute item. So we're going to cook. We'll set this for four minutes cook. But we want to stir in the middle. So we'll turn on the timer. There's a timer that works independently of the oven. So we'll do that. We'll shake the old maids to the bottom. I don't want to get old maids in here, the hard kernels. Now, what isn't popped isn't popped. And if we measured out what isn't popped, we'd have about a kernel 
of unpopped popcorn. That's about 90%. That's all we're guaranteed. The rest of it is then bird food. And I hear this, so we'll shut it off and we'll stir. See why we're going to stir is the brown sugar needs to be blended into the melted butter. Always a stir a pudding or a sauce before it's finished cooking, before you get a lump. And you notice I leave the wood spoons in the oven, which is all right to do for short term cooking. Now we'll just turn this on and we have time. We, we set the oven for four minutes, so we still have the two minutes to go on the um, on the oven. Our caramel is, is just about, uh, about finished and we will pour it over the, car, uh, the popcorn in the bag. We'll add the, the soda. We need a fourth of a teaspoon of soda and some vanilla. Vanilla. We could cheat and use the cap, but we'll put in a full teaspoon. And I want to show you this. I know we're just about to the end, and I want to show you how to do this. You're going to cook this three and a half minutes. We're going to put the caramel over the, over the popcorn, put it in your bag, and you'll want to finish cooking this. Put it in the bag. We'll cook a minute and a half. I'm Marilyn Martinez, and we'll see you next time with Microwave Cookery.